Hi, I'm Susan Dubois, owner of Trainway Silks, and today we're going to make a piece of Silk Fusion. So I have started with the starter kit, and I took the screen, which is this large, and then I folded it over and cut it in half. You can work with your screen just folded, but I like it cut better. I find it easier. So the first thing we're going to do is make a silk sandwich. So the bottom layer of the sandwich is your fiberglass screen. And then we're going to take the silk roving and we're going to do an east-west layer, a north-south layer, and then the final layer will be east-west again, and that will be done with the dyed silk. Then the screen goes on it and we work to the next stages. So this is silk roving. Silk roving is a lot of silk that is in a parallel format. Roving can be wool or cotton or anything. Roving speaks to how the silk is prepared. Every time I pick up a piece of silk roving, I do this. It's just second nature. That holding it close together, you notice nothing comes apart. And I do a little pop pop and that just puts a little air in and gets those fibers all aligned. The natural silk roving is in your starter kit. You can decide we choose to use the undyed silk for the bottom and the middle layer because, let's be honest, no one's going to see it if I do a one-sided piece of silk fusion, and it's a lot less expensive, so let's be smart about this. Now, to take your piece of, of roving, I find this is too long to work with comfortably, so I like to break mine apart. You notice when our hands were like this, it did not come apart. Just separate your hands further and just do a little gentle tug and it just separates. And notice this beautiful feathery edge. So we're going to start on our east-west layer. Now, this is a classic case of do as I say, not as I will probably do. To make your life easier, you want to leave at least one inch all the way around on your screen that's naked, that doesn't have any of the silk on it. It just makes it easier at the end when we're taking the screen off. So you lay the silk fusion, you lay it down, and you can kind of see that there's like a thin layer here. For the bo bottom layer and the middle layer, I choose to make those layers very, very thin. And you're in charge. You can make them thick, you can make them thin. But for how I like to use the silk fusion when I'm done for no sew applique, then a little bit thinner works better. So I put my finger down and I just do a gentle tug. And then I put my finger under it, lay it down, do a gentle tug. Catch it, lay it down, do a gentle tug. Catch it, lay it down, do a gentle tug. Now, when I get to the end, my fibers are starting to come over here. But I want it to be just a little bit bigger than this, but still stay within it. So I'm going to show how ambidextrous I can be when I really work at it. And I'm going to take my silk and I'm going to lay it down on the edge and I'm going to use my left hand to hold it down and then do the gentle tug. Row one is done. Now we're going to work on our next row. Lay it down, let it tug. Lay it down, let it tug. And you do want to watch your ends so you don't get it flipping up here. It won't really show on a thin layer in the bottom, but it's just good practice. And then the next lay row, and the next row, and you'll notice I'm talking, so it's a little bit lumpy, it's a little thick, it's a little thin, but you know that really doesn't matter because in the end we're doing, we're going to have an architectural grid, so we'll have a layer this way, a layer this way, a layer this way, so any thin spots will work themselves out. And one last row, And as this row is completed, we're ready to do our north-south row. We have choices. We can either turn our body and do it that way, or you can be lazy like me and turn the screen. And I gotta tell you, it was people watching my demos that said, why don't you turn the screen? I was like, oh yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> so we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna pick up a piece of roving and working with this, I have decided that this is a little bit too thick, meaning too wide, and I'm not controlling it the way I want to. So I've separated it, and now I'm going to do a vertical separation. Just kind of take it and lay it like this. 
Now I'm working with a little bit thinner piece of roving and I will find that easier to control how I go. So again, I start in the northeast corner of my piece. I lay my uh, finger down and I just go across, just exactly like we did before. And you can tell because I've made my roving thinner, I am making this layer thinner, which I uh, prefer. Where you lay the silk down is you'll, when you're looking at it really closely, you can kind of see almost an, a line where it gets, starts to become thin. That's where you lay it down and then pull it across. And you can tell this is a really thin layer, but that's okay. It's enough to hold everything together. And this will keep my silk from being, my piece of silk fusion from being overly heavy when I'm done. Now if I was going to make a journal cover, then I would want it really thick and heavy because that's going to go through some wear and tear. But since this piece is going to be used for a no-sew applique, then I want it to be a little bit thinner so that as I choose to do some hand stitching around the edges, it won't be as thick and easier to stitch with. And we're almost to the end of this one. And you notice each time I start in the northeast corner and work down southwest, that's so that I'm working away from the silk that I've already laid down. And we're going to do one last row. As you can tell, I'm in Colorado and it's getting a little bit static electricity and the silk is wanting to grab onto things. So I'm going to take my dryer sheet, pull one out, and rub my hands on it. Some people rub it on the silk. I prefer to just rub it on my hands. Now I'm ready for my third layer. So this is where you got to remember, ooh, I turned it to make it easier. So now I got to turn it again to make the final row easier. Now walker hook, this is everyone's favorite. So that's what I'm going to use to demo with. So I've pulled off a piece of it and again, Second nature, can't help myself. I do this little puffing to get the air in it and to make the fibers lay happily. Now this is hand painted, so it has multiple colors in it. And painted doesn't mean with acrylics. Painted means it's still using the dyes, but you've laid down the color the way you want to. You've painted the dye on. Now with this, you're in charge. You can either just go along and lay the colors down the way the, they're laid out in the roving, or you can break it at different places so you can make decisions about, oh, I want to do this or I want to do that. And again, this piece is a little on the thick side, but I'm going to go ahead and go with it. On my third layer, I like to have this one be thick. There's a lot of air in here, so it looks like it's thick, but once it gets wet, and presses down, there's going to be openings in there. I want my top layer to not have any peek through from the middle or bottom layers. That's a great technique that you can do, but for this piece, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to keep this wide and I'm going to put my finger in closer. When it's out here, it lays down just a tiny bit. When I move further inside, then I lay down more. And more. And I'm going to do some blue down this side. And then I want to get some green going in here. So I'm just going to use the other end, lay it down, and pull. And we have lots of static electricity today. You may have that also. So we will just use a little bit more on the hands. The other thing that I have done when the static electricity is a, a really extreme is I take a spray bottle with just water and I spritz it in the area. If you have a portable humidifier, you could use that. I just don't happen to have one of those. Now, if your silk curls back on top of itself, that's totally okay. You will see that in your final piece of fusion, but it can be really fun. In fact, we're going to take this piece and take advantage of how it wants to do that. And we're going to lay it, and we're just going to let it pull upward 
so it creates a little fan area. And you'll actually see those fibers moving around when it's done. We'll put a little bit more green in here, a little bit more green in here. I've got a thin area in here, so let's add some blues and purples. And a little more down here. So now we have our three layers. We had our bottom layer, our middle layer, and now our top layer. And I pretty well managed to stay within my one inch margin of no silk. Now there is an optional fun stuff that you can do. If you like the effect of kind of having some veininess in it, the silk, which can be really rich and wonderful, we have the Sari Silk Fibers. This is a 50 gram package, and I'll tell you, one package will last you a lifetime. There's all kinds of colors in here, anything that you might possibly want. And I'm gonna go for some contrast, so I'm gonna pull out some of this gold. And you can either have it kind of lay in a in a ball, but this is a case of less is definitely more. If you put in a big blob when your piece is finished, you're going to have a big blob. If you put down where you can barely see it, you'll be surprised how much you can see. And then because this is swirling, I'm going to take it and swirl it into that corner. And I'm going to make this a little bit less here, put a little bit there. All right, now. I am ready to put my other screen on top. So, especially because of the static electricity, you're going to want to make sure you've got this lined up so you don't scooch it around. So I'm going to start at this end and make sure that my screen just wants to roll down. Okay, now that the screen is on it, you can turn the ceiling fans on, the cats can come back up on top of the counter, you know, whatever it takes, because now everything is in place. So we've made our silk sandwich, and now we're ready to do the wet part of it. You'll notice that I have a piece of plastic down. It doesn't take a lot of water, but I like to protect my surface. And we have water here, and we have our soap or shampoo. It doesn't take very much. It's just a few drops in here, and you probably can't see it drop in here, but you'll tell that I have it in here because I'll take the jar lid, and I'll shake it, and you can see the foam coming up. The purpose for the water is it acts as a sur surfactant so that the silk can absorb all of the moisture. Of all of the steps of silk fusion, getting it wet is really the most important one. It's incredibly easy, and it, but it's very important. It's easy to get enthusiastic and want to just slap the water on and go fast, fast, fast. But time is your friend. So I'm going to pour a little water on here. I'm going to use my hands because for this it's just soap and water and I'm a very tactile person. And I am going to very carefully pour a little bit on here. You can use a brush and you can brush it all on, but I have learned over time that that's nice, but this works just as fast and you can easier for me. I'm very much about tactile, so I like to feel it. You can wear gloves if you want to, but at this stage it's soap and water, so for me there's not really a need to wear it. So how do you know when you've gotten this wet enough? And that's a really good question. I get asked that a lot. Um, it's really time. Uh, and you can tell by looking at it and by feeling it when it's wet enough. To look at it, you'll see areas that become darker. And at this point, there aren't any of those. I like to use two hands and just press that water in through those layers. I have a thicker area over here, so that just means it's going to take a little bit longer to absorb the water, and it's going to take a little bit more water. So I start in the middle, and I press outward. And the reason I go in this direction is because if there's any air bubbles caught in the silk, which is quite possible because there's a lot of air in that loftiness of the silk as you lay it down, air is going to act as a resist, and if there's air, there cannot be water. So I'm working this way to move the air, any air pockets out of the way. And I work on this side for a bit, and then now I'm going to flip it over. Now on this side, you can start to do, see darker areas. 
and it's much easier to see it on the back side where it's light colored. These darker areas means it's starting to get wet enough. The other way you can tell is from touching it, when it's not wet enough, there's some loft and it's subtle, but you can actually feel your fingers pressing down into it. Where it's wet enough and you press, there's no give. It's, it's really solid. I have people asking me, well, could you use a roller or a braid? A bray. And I'm sure you could. I just don't own those things, so I don't use them. And if I did own them, I wouldn't be able to find them. But so far, I've always been able to find my hands, and that's a good thing. And again, it's just pressing and pressing and pressing. What I like to do is I get so far, and then, okay, a little not as patient as I would like to be. So I get so far, and then I say, okay, that's enough, and I set it aside and let it seep in its own liquid juices, and then I start working on another piece. And then I'll set it aside, and I'll start working on another piece. But it's really all about time to get through all those layers. If you're impatient and you don't let it be wet enough, then that means the textile medium, which is basically acts, is going to act as a glue and fuse all of this silk together, the, silk the textile medium won't be able to penetrate all the way through. That's why the water is so important. You can think about it if you use some type of hair product and it needs to go on when your hair is wet. If your hair is too wet, then this product gets overly diluted and it doesn't really do the job that you want it to. If you put it on too dry, then you can't spread it around enough. So you're looking for that Goldilocks sweet spot that will enable you to have it wet enough but not too wet. And so at this point, we're going to say that is good enough to set aside and then we will let it uh, sit for an hour and we'll come back. Thank you.